In today's A-level IB video, we're going to be looking at enthalpy, and in particular, we're looking at endothermic and exothermic reactions. Now, in order to understand what's going on, let's first of all work out what's happening in a chemical reaction. Now, obviously, in a chemical reaction, energy is required to break the bonds in the reactants, and then energy is given out when new bonds are formed in the products. And notice that in chemistry, the most important type of energy is heat. So when we look at endothermic and exothermic reactions, we're going to compare the energy needed to break the bonds in the reactants with the energy given out when new bonds are formed in the products. And we're also going to talk about whether heat energy is, is given out or taken in. So notice that with exothermic reactions, heat energy is given out to the surroundings. With endothermic reactions, heat energy is taken in from the surroundings. Looking at definitions relating to bond strength then, so with exothermic reactions, the bonds of the products are stronger than the bonds in the reactants. Whereas with endothermic reaction, our definition is reversed, so bonds in the reactants are stronger than bonds in the products. If we look at some key examples of different types of reactions, well, with exothermic reactions, we've already said that heat energy is given out, so you'll feel the reaction become hot. Well, what sort of reactions become hot? Well, if you've ever carried out a neutralization reaction between an alkali and an acid, for example, then you'll fill the mixture and it gets hot. And obviously when you burn things, you combust them, they automatically get hot. So neutralization and combustion are both examples of exothermic reactions. A key example of an endothermic reaction, one which takes in heat energy, is actually photosynthesis. We now need to touch on a keyword, which is enthalpy. Now, the definition of enthalpy is the internal energy stored in the reactants. Now notice, you can't actually find out the value of the enthalpy of the reactants or of the products. What you can actually do is find out the difference between the two values. And we show that using this sign, delta H. So delta H is really the change in enthalpy of a system in a reaction. And notice that delta H is negative for an exothermic reaction and delta H is positive for an endothermic reaction. Don't worry if you're not following this too much. The questions they ask are very specific and it's more about the calculations you can do and how you recognise whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Don't worry too much if you're not too happy about what enthalpy is. Now lastly, notice that this notation means the standard enthalpy change of a reaction. And it's measured at standard conditions, which means 100 kPa and a temperature of 298 Kelvin. Now the last thing you need to be able to do is, aside from defining enthalpy, endothermic, exothermic, being able to understand if a reaction is endothermic or exothermic, you need to be able to be able to draw and understand an enthalpy diagram. And I promise they're not as complicated as they sound. Now, I'm just going to quickly label that an exothermic reaction has a enthalpy change, which is negative, and an endothermic reaction has a delta H, which is positive. We're now going to look at how we can draw enthalpy diagrams, and I'll show you how to do them step by step so you can also draw them yourself. So I've started by drawing two sets of axes. It's important that you label the y-axis as being the enthalpy of the reaction. And then the x-axis is the progression of the reaction. OK, now we'll get into actually drawing the important bits. So first of all, you're going to have to draw the reactants. And we'll start with the exothermic diagram. Now, look at our definition for the exothermic. 
Now we know with an exothermic reaction that heat energy is given out and we know that that change in energy or that enthalpy change is negative. So that means our products will have less energy than our reactants. So let's start by showing our reactants. It doesn't really matter where you show them. They just have to be higher than the products. Then label. So here are our reactants. And here are our products. Then you need to simply draw an arrow between the two showing the enthalpy change delta H, which we can see here is negative. Next up with endothermic reactions where we know our products have more energy than our reactants. We know that delta H here is positive, so let's just reverse the situation. And if you're drawing a rough drawing, you don't need any particular val values. It's just a matter of showing what has more energy, the reactants or the products. So delta H here is positive. So how do we write an equation for calculating delta H? Well, you simply do the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. And if they do give you particular products and reactants, then you can obviously write their formula on these lines on the graph. 